Right, welcome back to the channel. Me and Steve are at La Finca in Spain. Uh, we're just doing some chipping practice and I'm sort of in need for a bit of help with my chipping. So Steve's going to help me with that. And we're going to film this chipping lesson, but much in the way of like the tailor-made guys do it with Tiger and Scheffler. Yeah. And Obviously we're on par. Um, <laughs> but we want to go for that style of filming today. So it's not going to be like three things you should do for your chipping, blah, blah, blah. The camera's going to be rolling. Steve's going to be giving me a lesson and hopefully you can pick up some insights from the wealth of knowledge that is sorry. Well, it could be a two way street, I think. Wow. Well, it's good to bounce ideas, isn't it? And the way you, you see or play different shots that I'll see it different. And then you learn, learn a bit off each other. And yeah, there's no sort of right or wrong with short game. It's, you know, you get five guys that'll all see the shot different and play it in a different way. And, that might suit your style a bit more, my style a bit more, and you take mm -hmm. bits and pieces from each person. Yeah. So I'm expecting to learn off you. What are you? Yeah. Well, your short game's been. I'll teach you a thing or two, mate. On the videos I watched recently. To be fair, like my short game's definitely. Why you announce it before you hit every shot that is crap? Yeah. It's definitely got better, but there's still situations that I get in, like certain grasses or certain lies, that like freak me out. Yeah. So, for instance, tight lies with grain. If it's like grain into, that still scares the out of me i still don't feel like i feel like my technique may be good enough to get away with you, you know playing shots that are fluffy so i get I, get I feel a lot more confident in just like sliding the club under yeah but as soon as there's tight grass or grain because my low point control sometimes is not great and i feel like there's a few things that i do which cause that and also because I don't use the bounce because I feel like I shut the face too much. Yeah. I struggle but, with that. But also say everyone, unless, unless you're chipping really well, like the tight into the grain is when you are going to be like suddenly nervous about outcome, strike, yeah. more apprehensive than when you're chipping great, you're, you're not too concerned because you almost forget about the contact because you know you're going to hit it well. Yeah. It's a bit like if I give you, I won't say six iron, six iron's not in the best nick. But if I, if I give you a seven iron, you're not concerned, concerned about contact, are you? No. Although you might miss hit it, yeah. before you hit the ball, you're not concerned. Whereas when you get into the short game, because the outcome, it's the only part of the game where you see a tall pro duff it two yards in front of them. Yeah. It's like the, the fear becomes so much worse, whereas you won't see a tall pro off a good lie duff a six iron 50 yards up the fairway. Yeah. They might miss hit it yeah. 15 yards short, but they're not going to make an absolute tit of themselves. Whereas, yeah. because we don't have the speed and stuff in the short game. You can look a tit, the strike, you can look a tit. And yeah. there's probably decent clips of you looking like a tit. Well, there's a few, points. mate, yeah. We won't roll them though, Harry, all right? We won't roll them. Load them up. He's going to fucking roll them, I know he is. Yeah. Right, so we should, should I just start with hitting a few chips and then... Yeah, so what, what flag are you going to? Um, going to this one here. If you just watch out, they're getting a great ass shot, mate. Sorry. <laughs> they, they might want. It's a bit better than it used to be, this thing, I tell you. Yeah, you're looking trim. Oh, that's a joke. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this obviously wind into... This pr may not be the shot, but... Uh, just, uh, how would you... To say we're playing I mean, the shot, what do you see and what would you do and... Okay, well, this is, you know, maybe a bit sandy, fairly tight. There's a bit of giving. So, are you, that, so are you playing this grain. shot as the golf shot, or are you playing this shot as in? I'm playing this like because we're practicing. I'm playing this shot because we're practicing. Place. Like if I'm playing this shot, I'm putting it. Like because because yeah. you know. But <laughs> I mean, I, I, could... I meant more in terms of, say, we've only got five yards to the front of the green and yeah. fifteen yards. Are you hitting shots that you would hit? If I said you've got to chip from this situation on the course, or are you picturing the fringes? All right, well, let's, starting... let's picture for the sake of this that the fringe is starting a bit further up I've got because to the it's not a realistic. Do so you want a bit of a like a t front pin? I thought that was a vape there. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's say. That's hard, isn't it? Because that's only. I mean, this is a much more realistic scenario, right? So right there. that so got, much you got green, like six, seven yards. And let's say we've got this is more dodgy lies or rough or whatever. But yeah, I've got to up some reason. Yeah, let's just say. It. Yeah, you've got. But to otherwise, chip it. you're practicing a shot that you like. Yeah. So I think when you practice, you just go. Well, like you were going to when 
I, I sort of say, what shot are you trying to hit? You're like, well, you get so lie orientated rather than painting a picture of creating the shot, right, that's my fringe. Mm -hmm. I've got to chip this. What shot am I trying to play? Where I'm trying to land it? Uh -huh. I think you go straight into like a technical, I, yeah, I do. Sandy, that, yeah. it's grainy, tight. Yeah. Like almost creating problems rather than creating answers as to this is the scenario I'm in, this is the shot I see. I want, I can only hit a low shot, I want to learn to hit a high shot or something. Mm -hmm. You sort of rework it into, well, first things you said were like sandy, grainy, tight. Yeah. I'm just, I think I'm mentally coming up with reasons why I'm probably going to yeah, you're pre get one it, stuck. Yeah. Go on then, we'll hit a few. Well, let's, just, let's just hit a few. So we're going a few yards over, over my trusty lip salve. Yeah. I mean, that's, I've got away with that. It's not the best of strikes, but what? that's not, that's not too as bad. In, as in like fractionally heavy. Right. Like fraction. We've got the club going through and got the club going into through. the grain there. Oh, no, slightly across. I'd say one thing that's helped me massively recently because I'm trying to, I'm trying to just weaken off my grip in general a tiny bit in my left hand. Yeah. Because if I don't, it can get proper out of hand and it can get to like three, three and a half knuckles quite yeah. easily. And when I'm chipping, I noticed that my low point control wasn't great, but also what caused those duffs was the face coming back almost like shut. Yeah, yeah. So I've weakened off my grip in the long game and I found that as a result, it just helps me hold the face open a bit more and use the bounce. Yeah. Like it's helped a lot. As you can see, I mean, I'm putting yeah. on a display oh, for that's you. the clinic. It's a bit high and poppy, but fine. Should we just stop the video? Yeah, just, <laughs> this is how to chip, basically. <laughs> but like, what, what, if I said to you, like play a different shot to that. So say when you're practicing, you go through same shot, same shot, same shot. Yeah. I just remember when we were at Royal and you were like really technical and we're chucking balls round and I was like, well, play the shot you think you're gonna get close as opposed to you were all just technical practice. Yeah. Go on the course when you haven't hit a chip shot for half an hour and then expect to be able to hit a good chip shot as opposed to, say like if you're practicing here, so I almost have three landing zones Right, so be okay. like, right, I'll have a low landing zone, a mid landing zone, a high landing zone, working through what shots you can perform, what shots you can't perform, mm -hmm. then trying to break down why, say, like, the low shot's not working or the low shot's working well this week, the high shot's not working so well, and then is that, like, the conditions you're in, the grass, the turf... Right, OK. And get a bit of data to take to the golf course. Yeah, and try and build up a bit of confidence with the same as... Like, you would putt from here because you know you're not going to mess up a putt. Yeah. But you wouldn't ever practice putting from here. So it's a bit backwards to do all your practice like this, then I'm going to putt because I don't want to chip. But yeah. And you're also not practicing yeah. your chipping. You're, you're almost practicing one style of chip that's pure technique, pure technique, pure technique. And it's either going to be good or bad. But then you wouldn't ever play that style of chip on the course. Yeah. Does that makes sense? Yeah, Whereas, no, I get you, yeah. Like say pitching here, I'll be like, right, I'll try and get almost three landing zones. Let's do that then, so I'll grab like some balls. Can... It's almost like your practice is a test of your technique. Yeah, and yeah, it's either it is, gonna yeah. be not too bad I'm getting away with it, because you never say, <laughs> Pretty much. oh, it's really in a good place at the minute. But I think it's because you don't work through, like that's your test when you go and practice, as opposed to now you're starting to build a test where it's like working through different flights. Yeah changing your technique subtly to get different outcomes and seeing which ones are working best at that mm -hmm. time as opposed to whenever I practice for you it's almost like you're waiting for it to go wrong yeah pretty much and then and I'll get like that one and it'll be like oh. and you will go through the same standard chip shots that you almost never play because you practice what you're never going to do yeah because I'm scared to play that yeah. shot on the golf Whereas course I think if you work through like here try and pitch in you know, to, to get the same club to get landing on the on the shortest one, you're gonna have to get a low flight, more yeah. ball speed, landing lower, skipping forward. Okay. Then let's, we've got like a middle one, and let's then try it then. And I'll just talk through like what I'm sort yeah. of like think, thinking or feeling. Yeah. Because some shots you'd be like, it won't suit your technique as much as you know. If you're 
generally a bit too far back in the stance and hood it in your takeaway. So that will the, the lower, shorter one is going to be more favourable to your technique. Mm -hmm. As you try and get the higher, softer one, it's probably going to create more problems and you'll have to make a bigger technique change yeah. in setup to produce that shot. Someone else that fans it open quite a bit on the way back would be like, right, the higher, the higher, further carries the easier shot. Mm -hmm. The lower one, they can never get the flight down enough to get the ball moving forward. And then the middle one is like more of a strike based outcome. If you know what I mean, that's where everyone yeah. should live as in, if I strike it well, land in the middle one, yeah, it's like the safest zone. Standard type but, chip. So most of the places we practice, like this lovely facility, but it's, it's quite flat with a flat green. So when we get on the course and suddenly you, yeah, we could have this length shot, but we're going from 12 feet below the length of the green. Yeah. So suddenly we it's need a higher flight shot you know, or chipping down, etc. So yep. it's good to practice a variation of shots mm -hmm. in your practice rather than your generic just shot. Just looking what can go wrong. Because that's sort it's, of how... Yeah, it sounds like that might actually be helpful, Steve, to be fair. <laughs> we'll start with like the low skiddy one at the... What are you calling that? The lip salve? Lip salve. It's is. a lip salve, is it? Yeah. It's not a cartridge. That was actually bought in Tenerife, mate. It's doing well and it's back in Spanish land. Is Blimey. Tenerife in Spain? Uh, yeah, it? yeah, it's yeah. Uh, owned by Spain, yeah. yeah. So what, to change your flight from what you were hitting, yep. what you are hitting, what are you going to go through? Okay, so I'm going to do a setup and <laughs> yeah. So a couple things that I try and do is I get a, a bit closer, I get the ball back a bit, I try and feel like the toe is a bit further down. Yeah. And then I just try and feel a little more drivey, keeping the hands forward. Yeah. Um, rather than releasing it and just trying to almost just feel like I'm hitting like a do little do it more punch shot. Not a massive ball position change, but trying to get I've, this up. Yeah, slight ball, slightly steeper. Slight on. ball position change. Yeah. It goes back a bit, but I guess not too much. And then I feel like I'm setting the wrist and just driving it forward. Yeah. And right, because of right. that, because it's a bit more and just leading a edge, I try and shot or a dangerous shot for you? Right now this is probably not great. Right. You might get that answer for all three scenarios. Well, you put on a clinic. A yeah, no, I did, yeah. <laughs> it's f***ing prime. <laughs> it's <f> prime. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. <laughs> <laughs> is this a risk? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it's a bit risky. <laughs> ah. Right. So the outcome is yes, <laughs> it is risky. Um, right, so now. now <laughs> I've gone. Sorry. <laughs> now I'm going to try and play this a different way. So, <laughs> so oh. that was. Right, I'm just going to get a but bit more. To be honest, that does highlight. Because you could have stood there for half an hour hitting those, whilst well, a medium flighted shot for you. Yeah. Been like, oh, sweet, cool. And then you get in a scenario on the course where, say, if you've got a tier and you want to run it up, mm -hmm. but we need, we're below the level, so we need to get a bit of flight. Like, then you're trying to play more of that shot. Yeah. But you're not practicing that shot, and yeah. we didn't get the best of outcomes. <laughs> so, what, what would you, you, that's your fear, like the club that's, that's digging? Yeah, it is, yeah. And the club face digging because it's getting slightly steeper, but also mostly, I think, because the face shuts a bit more. And with that one, handled back, I don't know, it feels like I've probably got my grip a bit stronger because I feel like when you get the handle up, the face automatically is aiming a bit further right. Yeah. So maybe it Your probably setup, you were, isn't... You're almost like you're hitting a... It looked like you're almost chipping to this front flag on the left where you're trying to hit like a high one off a tight lie almost getting like a bit across it yeah as opposed to a driven shot right so i would be like why would i want my face open on this shot at setup if yeah. i'm trying to get the flight down because you're, you're aiming it right sort of adding loft pointing the face right whereas well, you, you sort of know it's going to dig on this shot so you've just got to get your low point far enough forward yeah 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 which that's which I where didn't... i would get the sort of toe in i'm dragging the loft down yeah my, the only risk with that outcome is the fat one that doesn't go anywhere. If you caught this a bit clean, well, we're only trying to pitch it five yards. Yeah, you get away with it. Anyway, so if we catch it bottom groove and it pitches two yards, it's fine. Yeah. 
So I, I would get the face a bit squarer. Not, don't stand quite so close. Okay. So if I show you where that face is aiming. Oh, it's aiming right. You're aiming. Okay. Like almost get the thing towed in. Okay. Towed Square. in. And Let's then... get that ball back. So then we don't have to worry How about How far the... back is that though? That's just past your right toe. Because this is the other thing, because... I've... But you're, you're creating the sort of surroundings that set up that you want to create the shot. We've got to hit a low driven yeah. shot. So if, if this was like really tight, the high one's not an option. Yeah. Let's just so make sure we don't let's make low sure we point get, yeah. before this. Whereas you were a bit hands high, ball sort of not that far back, face yeah. pointing a bit right, hands leading it a bit forward, and it just dug. Yeah. Whereas if you had played that with the ball a bit further back, you probably would have got away with it. Yeah. All and right. And your club face isn't creating a setup that's going to produce. You know, if I said to you, oh, I want you to hit a bullet low draw, and you've got a setup with the face open and yeah. to the right you'd be yeah. like hang on mate yeah like i'm gonna get this thing hooded just to get it hooking because this is more of a okay. hooky trappy so slightly shut if anything right yeah and then ball Point position right back so yeah, we don't have here. to get so close let's toy around with a little bit further away yeah so as if we do get it slightly wrong that shaft plane's not so steep the angle of attack's not quite oh that's just better. nipped isn't it and it's actually not yeah, I feel like every time I go up these here, be quite so I feel like every time I go up here too close, it gets it just gets a bit gonna steep stub because in. I pick it up and I drop Which it that's down. That's fine if you're chipping off that stuff, the hard pan. Well, you know the club's going to bounce. Yeah. But you need to get the club under the ball. That's when I'd get sort of toe down, heel up. Okay. Where I know I can throw that down. Right. And it's just going to bounce back up. Whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's getting stuck and stubby. All right. So back, and then just trying to get it dinking there. Almost like I'm trying to see that was the see, one that was where clean, I catch it a little bit clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the low point further forward for the shot you're trying to play. Because I think like a big thing with my chip in, because I went for a bit of like fear, and it's my like whole process is like anxiety based, and I'm trying when I'm chipping, I'm trying to make sure I'm bottoming out and not having that disaster. Yeah. I lose like all the creativity that goes into practice or seeing shots. Yeah. So like I always on the golf course play better for like because I'm quite visual but then on the short game area I'm like F like everything goes out the window and it's like right how can I not how can I not stub this so I don't get yeah. creative with the well, if you go back to say when you're a kid or yeah all you do is creativity you're like let's get behind this tree mm. who can hook it around the tree if you mess it up it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. it's like right I let another oh, cool I can hit that shot or yeah. you tell your mate like oh, I've learned this flop shot or because you need to get a little bit of that into your practice through setting up different stations where it's not yeah. a pure technique test of a standard. You basically solely focus on how the balls come off the club. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you're not really that outcome based when you practice. Yeah, 100%. Whereas if you've got a bit more outcome based and a bit more variation, okay. Because then your middle technique, you should sort of meet in the middle if. The low one's not so good and the high one's good. It's like, right, well, I can work back to improving the low one and my middle shot, like, should improve yeah. as, as a, your more standard chip. Yeah, so if, if, I, get get, this fear if I get then practice. just focus on, right, I'm trying to hit, almost like hitting different shapes with on the short game area in a sense yeah. that that's how I picture it because like right yeah, I'm trying to hit like a, a low draw. I'm trying to hit a low draw so I would I would put it back there and figure out a way of hitting a few shots yeah. and then working out if I went the other way and said hit the high one but you've got to get your face pointing left you'd be like well no I'm, yeah like but that's what you did when you tried to hit the low one yeah you know you got the face pointing right adding loft beautiful yeah so it's yeah, like naturally, I'm like, right, I'm trying to hit a low draw. You need to get more into the shot, but you only get more into the shot with your, by practicing. By practicing different. Skill sets and outcomes where you're like, it's not just a pure, I'm going to go down the short game area for half an hour and wait for my technique to mess up, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just different gravy, in it? And toy around with, say, in it low, then be like, right, can I hit it low with a divot, without a divot? If the club's getting stuck, it's like, right, what would I do to say shallow it out a bit that. more or get it less diggy but keep the flight down and just like experiment with yourself yeah right so let's try and do one so say if, if you we hit three balls in a minute yeah i'll go and grab them while you're chatting 
So if you, if you hit three shots, but try and change. So say I think you probably get a hair too close. Okay. So it's like, right, hit one, ball back, we're trying to hit it low, where you get super close. One where you feel a bit further away and one even further away and just see what happens to the way your club works through the ground. Okay. And if you do that a couple of times, you'll see, see like a few different patterns. So then you start learning, our oh, club's getting sticky, like stuck in the ground. Or oh, it could be on any of the shots. Well, I've learned that's generally a tendency when I get too close to the ball or too far away. You start learning your own patterns. Yep. So that you can start fixing yourself. Say on a practice swing, you know, if so, oh, club got stuck, club's got stuck again, you need to do something in your setup to change the way that club's going to work through the ground. But then you learn it might be standing a bit further away. Could be, yeah. right, I'll just get my hands a little bit lower. All right, so what do you want me to do with these three then? So set up, as you were originally, hands quite high. If we get off the middle, so we've got similar. And there's no real outcome here. It's just testing, feeling how the club's going through the ground. Okay. So if you go hands like, as you were, hands high, close, and but with the, with the face a bit squarer. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that feels like, well, at the moment it feels a bit more dangerous because it's a bit steeper. So that club, if you catch that fat, the ball's yeah, not going, going nowhere. anywhere. So let's so go now not, bit, yeah. a bit further away. Yeah. So this would be, say, where you feel like in the middle, where you're like, I could go further away, I could go closer. Okay. So I'd say the club went through that ground a little bit yeah, easier. A lot easier, yeah. Which is interesting. If you, if you do one when you're even further away. Yeah. So right, that went through the ground miles easier. Yeah, that feels like there's a lot of margin for error at so that it's point. Like as you're playing different conditions or wanting different shot choices, you're starting to learn, I actually like, it's digging, I'll go further away. But you still got the same flight, but the club interaction was totally different yeah. through the ground. So it gives you, but you still almost hit. gives you a bit more it gives confidence, you more options doesn't it? As to what you're doing as well. Because if you think if I stood like that and tried to get the club to dig into the ground, well, I'm going to be coming so shallow and slidey. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if someone says stick the club into the ground, I'm just going to get it vertical, yeah. go like that, and it's going to stick. Whereas if someone <laughs> said get it to stick with your hands super low, yes, it's going to be a lot harder for the club to stick. Yeah. Even though you, you, you're still setting up with the hands forward and stuff, the club is going to slide through it a little bit more. Then your low point could get a little bit further back if you go too far. And yeah. then you'd want to get a hair closer to lean. So you're, you're always like monitoring okay. by doing tests like this yeah. where you've got different outcomes. So here it's basically frigging out a few different stations, a few different shots, yeah, each shot visualizing you're that, got a goal. and then going right. You've got a shot you're trying to hit. <clears throat> Right, that was good, bad, indifferent. And then go through it with a couple of, you know, say on the middle flight, it could be ball position change, where I'll go like one ball back, middle, one ball forward for different shots or different outcomes. And you're always trying to learn off a shot as opposed to you, when you come down and practice, it's a technical test of like, I'm chipping today, yeah. technique's gone. But you don't really know why or how or what's caused it. And you're not really outcome based enough that if you hit a good shot or a bad shot, you're like, well, it's a bit diggy or it's a bit this or it's a bit that. You're, yeah. all, you're always reflecting on the negatives. You're almost setting yourself up to fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to yeah. technique stuff's brilliant, it's, but you need a bit of experimentation yeah. and a bit of learning and a bit of outcome based. What am I trying to do with this golf yeah. ball? No, you, this is quite interesting actually, because I do find when I'm on the golf course, Say I like, if it's not this, the very generic shot that I've practiced warming up, I'll get on the golf course and perhaps I've got to hit like a slightly high one. I'm like, I've not played around with anything. I've not really tried to hit any different type of shot. Yeah. So what am I doing in a scenario? Then it, I'll almost revert back to, right, let's try and sort of like manage what I've got. Try not to yeah, you, fail. You sort instead of end up of, with the club golfer that doesn't want to chip and uses a hybrid. It's like, that's brilliant. But you're right coming when you're playing for a couple of quid or in a match play, but you need to practice the other stuff and start implementing it into your game. Yeah. Like, you know, playing around the golf because I'm going to play nine holes and I've got to chip every time I'm off the green. 
and you know you could you could do it where you're I'm going to chip with the club I feel I should chip with or I'm going to chip with nothing with less loss than my gap wedge say where you're like right I want to work on my gap wedge sand wedge lob wedge yeah. shots and like always try and improve the areas by giving yourself little different tests yeah and have a goal when I ain't come and that goal like I say could be purely technical where you might hit 20 shots the same flag over and over again just getting a feel for whatever you're working on yeah then you need to go to the other end where it's how is this performing and what what is the outcome i'm now hitting it higher than before and yeah. can i still hit a low shot and yeah learning as you would as a kid but as a kid you don't really notice you're doing it you're yeah just you're just fun. you're just having fun you're just trying different stuff for the sake of it go on let's fire if i'll get those balls fire a few right. we'll go to the middle one right then so based on what you just said i'll just try and I'd like just try a few different shots to these yeah. things to finish off then, yeah? Yeah, so before you start it, I'd say, what one do you think is going to be your most comfortable? Say it might be the middle ball, the furthest ball, the shortest ball, depending on what stage you're at. Yeah. Work through and test it, and then, but get more focused on like the outcome, how close did I land it? Was it the right sort of trajectory to land it there and get it to finish near the hole? Yeah. And then you're getting some feedback. Right, so just go through them, yeah? Yeah, so what one are we going for? Right, go for the front one first, front first one. ball, and it was mixed up a bit. Right, gonna... start, if, you don't, if you're not successful, try and work back through. If you hit the shot again, what would you change? Yeah. Right, it could be okay. a setup change or... Right, we're well, just going for the exact same thing. So stood a bit further away, but just trying to feel like a low draw into that blue thing. I mean, it's just carried slightly too far yeah, maybe I'd, a bit poppier but you learn than I would, the, have liked. I would say the distance it carried past is the distance the balls mm. finished past the hole yeah so, so it's like the flight was a little bit poppy but if we moved everything back you would have hit a good shot yeah so it's like you're almost the touch was a little bit out yeah but it's a different variation of the shot so your touch isn't going to be as good as the one you feel most comfortable with yeah right middle yeah so this is sort of like mid-flight. Just trying to neutralize everything to a degree. So I'm gonna stand like comfortable distance from it, ball in the center. Yeah. And with that weak grip, this feels like the face is holding open a bit more. And that's bang on. So, but that's totally different than in the shot without a marker. Cause you can see you landed that two inches yeah. away from your spot. It's finished, you got everything spot on, landing spot. The speed on the ball, the flight, because it's finished two inches away from the hole. Yeah. It's like your feedback's totally different than if you hit a shot where you're like, I'll oh, just try and get it close to the flag. I don't really know what I'm trying to do to get it close to the flag. Yeah. Right, and then the high one. So I'm going slightly up. I'm going to stand a tiny bit further away, get the handle down a bit, open the face up, and just trying to feel almost like slightly across it. Yeah. That's not, not too bad. But then, Bit deep. if you wanted to make that harder, say you went low, medium, high, it's like, right, now I'd go high, low, medium. So you're not working up through the levels. It's suddenly you're going from one extreme to the other extreme, yeah. to like the middle extreme, just, just to make it like them up. a bit. Yeah. And you can do it with putting towels out on the green, Yeah. see how many times you can land it on a certain towel in a row, and then yeah. jump up the orders. Just things where you get, you know, a designated... You improve your skill, you've got an outcome and a result, rather than yeah. just looking for something that's gone wrong in your technique the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting that. Well, that's it's interesting because you've, instead of like just standing there and saying, right, to this shot, you need to do this, this and this. I think it works well just almost trying to like work things out for yourself yeah. by uh, having uh, that there. If you've got a rough guide, as your flaws in your technique, it's like they're not going to change too much and you can toy around with your own slight setup changes that people wouldn't even really notice but can make quite a big difference to how the club's working through mm. the ground and like when we were at Royal and we you were chipping sh but then I put we did like a little test off different lies and stuff and you chip really well I was like we well, can chip but then your response was I'm managing it but I'm like yeah but everyone's always managing it because that shot Rory hit at the Ryder Cup when he spun it that like pitch when he's below the level of the green, mm -hmm. he checked. I was like, if you, if he, he didn't cho cho he didn't cho choose to hit that shot at that point. That come out of the repertoire of like good shots. Otherwise, you would just hit that every time. Yeah. You're on that sort of grass. You're like, 
Well, I'm just going to land it five feet short, zip it back. It's perfect. Like, they're always managing lies, shots, how confident they are. Yeah. The shots you feel you can play well at the minute, shots you can't, and those shots are come and go. So it's like you, you need to manage it. There's nothing like that's a good thing to do. Whereas your response is almost like, there's something wrong with me because I've got to manage it. Whereas I'm like, no, everyone yeah, is constantly spot. managing <clears throat> all areas of their game. Yeah. All right. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, it did. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, basically just, I mean, I don't put enough time in my short game anyway. I just don't. And the stuff I do is not the best as, as, as we, as we've discussed. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take that. More, more and, discipline, but more fun. So yeah. I'm right. I'm setting so, this out, but I'm doing it in a fun. Yeah, exactly. Rather than. So getting three up. stations or whatever, and then getting creative but then making slight alterations yeah. and start taking notes of what works, what doesn't work, and then putting it together. And then you can actually take that to the golf course then, can't you? Yeah. You're you feel a right. wake up by going, walk into the short game area. It's almost like I hope my technique's not broken today. Yeah, exactly. And I can still, whereas you don't really have a goal when it comes and something to sort of focus on. And a bit of fun trying to learn, hit different shots and get a bit more creative. And you might never do it when you play on the course, but yeah. you need, if your standard chip's not working, you need another one to go to, and yeah. that could be a higher or a lower chip, or you know, when you're playing different types of grasses, you need slightly different styles, and yeah, yeah. but you need to learn how to play those. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, I bet you learned something from that, guys. Uh, cheers, mate. Yeah, I'm not really sure what they learned there, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, cheers for watching. If, um, if you're interested in coming away on a coaching trip, me and Steve are gonna be doing these, ongoing basically we're gonna try and get to a point where we're doing one a month to spain portugal other parts of the world um which is going to be sort of a bit of coaching bit of playing a bit of fun yeah 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 um uh, then there is an email in the description uh just send an email saying you're interested and we'll send you some information cheers mate perfect nice man. one